study of the Yajurveda. Ya itam devam Ekabritam Veda Sa Sarvasmai Vipashyati Yacha Pranani Yachana Tamidam Nikatam Saha Sa Isha Eka Eka Breed Eka Eba Sarbi Asmin Deva Eka Brito Bhavanti He is one. All gods that we see different type of gods and goddesses but ultimately they are one then it says if the gods and the other is one then who am i i am also part and parcel of the same creation then it says in the next sloka naham manushyo nacha deva yakshaha Na Brahmana Shatriya Vaishya Shudraha Na Brahmachari Na Grihi Banasthava Bhikshu Nacha Aham Nija Bodha Sarupaha The, all the existence that we see in the external world, right from the human being down to all, I am not that. And the different stages of the human life, that is brahmachari, then grihi householder, then retired people, and also the sannyasin, these four stages of life, that also I am not. Then what I am, then it says, Nija Bodha Sarupa. I am the self, that is what I am. Now, we will be studying the Krishna Yajurveda today. We have already in our introductory talk about Yajurveda on 7th February, the last week. I have spoken about the two branches of this Veda, and that is Krishna and Shukla. Krishna Yajurveda and Shukla Yajurveda. Today we will have some idea about the Krishna Yajurveda. We are not going to discuss or read the, all the slokas. We know that more than 1000 slokas are there. It is not possible to study. And those who are very much interested in Veda, they can go through. The books are available. But we will only touch it. Now, last time, in the la we, we concluded with wonderful two uh, mantras that we see in the Veda. That is, one is, O Lord, we resort to thee for the supply of foodstuff. That is a very basic. And the Krishna Yudhu Veda, when we will study, we will see, they go very basic. So that is why sometimes we are confused. But you have to remember that the Veda is the combination of all knowledge. Veda means knowledge. And it is the all branches of knowledge, all knowledge is there in the Veda. O Lord, we resort to thee, we request thee, we refuge, take refuge in thee for the supply of foodstuff, the basic thing so that we can uh, survive and vigor. Not only just food, but at the same time the vigor, so that we can also arm that. May the creator, the fountain of happiness and knowledge, inspire us from the, for the performance of noblest deeds with our organs. So this body, this sharira, they say, this is the shetra, this is the instrument 
with which, with the help of this body only, we can realize God. Without no, this body, we cannot. The mind is the main, but the body is also the supporting part. So they are telling, we need food, at the same time vigor, and the blessings, so that we can do something which will make you, the God, happy. May the Lord of land and cattle be constant and full possession of these. That our cattle, our land, and all our family, you please take the responsibility. May ye protect the cattle, wealth, progeny of the virtuous soul. The last they say, the virtuous soul. I am not asking that you have to protect all those who are sinners, who are committing sins, who are doing mistakes, torturing others. No, I am not praying for them. I am praying only for those who are very good people. Please protect them. At the same time, in the same Yajur Veda, it says, Agne Bratapate Bratam Charishyami Tachakeyam Tanme Radhyatam Idam Aham Anritat Satyam Upoimi. It says in the fifth sloka, O God, the Lord of vows, I take the vow. Then what do we do? We take the mantra, we accept the ideology. What is that? I am taking something, I am vowing that I am going to do it. That is my part. O oh God, the Lord of vows, when I am taking that vow, you are the God. Otherwise, I cannot do that. I will observe the vow, but may I have strength for that. This is very important. Afterwards, in the Upanishad, we will find that the one gentleman was asking me, who is going to realize God? How he will know that he will realize God? Then I quoted from the Upanishad, I said, no one can say. There are some processes, and they always say, if you are following this, these processes, this system, there is an opportunity for you to get the blessings of God. And in the Upanishad, which is not talking about God, but the Atman, it says, Yame Barishe Brinute Tenalabhya. Yame, whom he has chosen. He, it may be God, at different names we are giving, it is very easy to call him as God, because we can understand the conception of God. It may be Atman. Yame Barishe, whom he has chosen, he is only get the blessings. Not that, that I have practiced, uh, practiced austerity, I have fa fasted for the whole month, I have done this, I have done that, so I will get the blessing, blessings of God. No certainty. But percentage is more because you are doing the good thing, so naturally good things will come. So this is, it says, O God, the Lord of vows, I will observe the vow, may I have strength for that. Pray, grant me success in the fulfillment of my vow. I take the vow of renouncing. What is the vow I am going to take? I am going to take the vow of renouncing the untruth and embracing the truth. So this is very, very important. Satyameva jayate nanritam. Anrita. Anrita means falsehood. Satya means truth, anrita, untruth, false. And Satya is going to be, that, that is the motto of the India, the government of India, they always write in that, Satya me bajayate, nanritam. Unfortunately, they always practice the last one. <laughs> so now, what to do? Because they have no faith. That is the problem. They are not having the faith unless and until you have the faith. And how the faith will come? The strength will come of the, with the blessings of God, otherwise not. That's why in the beginning, is praying to God, I am going to take the vow. What is that vow? Renouncing the untruth and accepting the truth. But bless me so that I can continue in that, otherwise it is very difficult. What is this sannyasa life? This the same thing and nothing else. In the sannyasa time, what do we accept? It's a vow. 
Only the dress is changes. Some people they put the different type of dress that is different. But is the that is nothing but the vow. And who is? I am taking the vow before somebody should be there as a witness. Who is the witness? Agni, fire. So we will come to that because the fire is the first god that was understood and realized by the Hindu mind, the fire. So that fire, Agni, we burn the fire and then we give the oblation, different type of flowers and the leaves and the ghee. And then we say, I am burning whatever, my desire, my ego, my all those things, bad things, which is binding me to this world, I am burning it. And again, some people, they are going to householder's life. Again, who is? Of course, here in America, I don't know. But in India, India still that is there, they burn the fire and then they take the vow and they will go around seven times. The Hindus mostly, they do it seven times going around that I am taking the vow that we are going to live together. We will be friendly to each other. I am going to protect all these things. Why? Because the human society is coming out of that couple. So this is very, very important. It's not just the physical enjoyment and forget like the animals. This is important, very, very important because the human society is going to grow out of that couple. So that is why it's a different type of institution, a very holy institution. How it is holy? Because we have taken the oath. What is that oath? That we are going to support each other. Why? So that the next progeny will be good. So that is what is called Veda. What is Veda? This knowledge. What is that knowledge? This conception. If I am bad, the whole humanity is going to suffer. So that is the main thing. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna in the present day, in the very modern age, he said, Satya Kathai Kalir Tapasya. What is the austerity of the, this present age, Kali Yuga? Satya, truth. You have to hold fast to truth and nothing else. So that is called the clinching to the truth is the main austerity in this age. So this truth, now friends that we are going to read about this, but before that we know that in the Purana, they describe in this way, once the firstborn, firstborn according to the Hindu mythology is the Brahma, the four heads. Why the four heads? Because the four Veda, Rik, Sam, Yaju, Atharva, all the four Vedas, he is going on thinking about, the speaking about that and his color is red because he is creating. The when you are creating, when you are thinking all the time you are active, so they say it is the Rajaguna. What is the color of Raja? Red. So the Brahma, the four-faced, firstborn, he is meditating. Meditating on what? Meditating on the Nada. Nada means the Shabda. What is the Shabda? It's the Omkara. Just Om, that is sound is coming and he is meditating on that. Then through the Pranaba, then through that Omkara, that different later started revealing before him. It was only the Omkara. A, U, Ma. Mostly we pronounce Om. No, it is not O, it is A. A, U, Ma. A, U, Like this. So A, then O, then Ma. This is the Om. This Omkara, that over that he was meditating and suddenly he started uh, observing that the revelation of the laters are coming. So A, B, C, D, the A, A, K, K, like that, all the laters are coming. And then with that it became the Veda. Then the knowledge came. The Veda we know are sections, uh, it is categorized as four. Vedavyasa did that and Vedavyasa 
distributed because it's a vast knowledge, 20,000 slokas. Main slokas are to more than 20,000. And then again, the subsections are also there. So he gave it to four disciples. And Paila, Paila got the Rig Veda, Vaishampayan got the Yajur Veda, Jaimini got the Samu Veda, and Sumanta got the Atharva Veda. In the Vishnu Puran, it says, Brahmana Choditu Vyasa means four. Chaturtha means four. The Vyasa, he divided the total Veda into four parts. Brahmana Chodito Vyasa Vedan Vastantu Pachakrame Atha. Now Shishyan Sa Jagraha. Atha Shishyan, his disciple, he is giving the responsibility that you have to continue this Veda. Veda Paragan, etc. Veda Paragan, that is the Vishnu Punishad, Vishnu Purana, it says. That the four Vedas and the four uh, the shishyas, the disciples, they got it. Each Veda again having the major two parts. One is mantra, another is brahmana. The mantra is the, another name of the mantra is samhita. Why samhita? Because it is united. This is called samhita. What is the meaning of the mantra? Then the yashka. They are all afterwards, much afterwards. They are giving the, uh, the explanation. What is called mantra? Mantraha mananath. But you have to go on repeating, so it is mantra. Some words which we go on repeating is called mantra, mananath, manan. Manan means thinking. Suppose it's a big story, I cannot completely repeat the whole story. I can have some outline of the story. I can, some of the movies that we have seen long back, still we can understand. Some of the stories that we have read, still we can remember. But when we are going on repeating some word, holy word, so that the other thoughts are at bay, are stopped in the mind, mind is nothing but the flow of thoughts. So some thought that we are pouring, giving to keep the other thoughts out from the mind, that is manan, that is constant repetition. And that the name of that is called mantra. So Yashka, a very famous expounder of the Veda, he says mantra mananath. Now the application of the mantra, other call or the samhita is known as brahmana. The brahmana is a caste nowadays we talk about that. But the brahmana is the application of the mantra. What is the mantra again? That is some of the gods here in the, in the Veda, the mantras, they, they will be talking about so many things to perform. But only that words are there, like the chemistry. This plus this becomes this and you do this, you do that. That is called mantra part. Now when the teacher taking to the laboratory and asking them to apply that, that is called brahmana. So the Brahmana part is the application of the same mantra. And according to the Apastamba, Apastamba another, a very highly qualified person who could explain the Veda, he says, Karma Chodana Brahmanani. That means it is the system, Bidhi. In the Sanskrit it says Bidhi. Bidhi means the system. You have to place like this, you have to do like this, you have to do like that, etc., etc., etc. That's called vidhi. Now, there's a system if you come in the evening that we are doing the arati, there are five things are there, and we are showing the very first thing is the light, then comes the water, then comes the, uh, the cloth, then comes the flower. That's a system. Suppose you take the first fan and do the fanning first. Because it was hanging in the front, okay, now it is over. What are left? Okay, another two, three. You can do that, but that is not the bidhi. The system is different. Now, when you sit to eat, the different type of people, they eat in a different way, but there's a bidhi, system is there. So, they first, they sip a little bit of water, 
and the drinks and then they start slowly, slowly. Then there will be some courses, the next courses, then main courses. It goes like that. If you first complete the last course, then you come, oh, it was left. Let me eat. No problem. You can eat, but that is not the bidhi. That is not the system. Everything has a bidhi, system. So this bidhi is called brahmana. Apastamba is telling, according to apastamba, karma chodana, brahmanani. This brahmanani means the system. System is the brahman. Then it says again, the brahmana part teaches the system of rituals. Here, the system of rituals, there are so many rituals will be there. Particularly in the Hindus, if you go, they have forgotten. But some places in the South India still they remember. And some pockets are there, they still, they, oh my God, if you go, you will be mad. What so many varieties of things that they are doing. But perfectly they will do that, the system of rituals. And when we will read this, the Veda, you will see that how they are doing. They are going to the earth, that is also a ritual. So we will come to that. There is a system of ritual, what should be done and what should not be done. So should be done and should not be done, that is also listed over there. Then the performance of sacrifice, that is called yajna. Then explanation of the yajna, that is also very important. Why I am performing this yajna? The explanation of the yajna. Then benefits of the performing of yajna, that is called atharvabad, arthabad. Itibad, arthabad. What is that artha? Artha means not the meaning. Arthabad means eulogizing or giving you the idea, if you perform like this, you will have this. So that is called Arthabad. And sometimes we will talk about the stories, then someone was going on praying to God, and the, like the Mirabai. Mirabai was dedicated to Krishna, and Mirabai was going on praying to Krishna. Then some people always, they go like that, she was not harming anyone, but still people were not very happy, near about people, he, her own relatives. They wanted to kill her. They sent the poison, telling that your husband has sent it to drink. And in those days in our country, the wives are supposed to obey whatever the husband says like that. When the Mirabai said, my husband has said, okay. But she could understand this is nothing but the poison she is going to uh, consume. But she remembered the God and then she took that poison, nothing happened to her. That is called Arthabada. Arthabada means giving the example, sometimes explaining that if you perform like this, God is going to help you. There is a story that one person, he was very good and he was going on praying to God. Then the God appeared to him and he said, what do you want? He said, the one means what? If I say now this thing, then one will be over. No, you be always with me, at my back. And wherever I go, whatever I do, whenever there is uh, some problem, the danger, I will remember you, you come and help me. God said, okay, I will do that. Then he started walking on the seashore. And after a few steps, he saw that whether another steps are also following or not. If not, then he is shouting, you give me the word that you will be at my back? Where are you? I can't see you. God, then he saw the footsteps are coming, following him, so he was assured. Then to test, he went to a place which is very slippery, and then he said, oh God, lift me and cross this place. Unnecessarily, he was testing God. But anyway, he wanted to see whether the God gave the word is true or not. Then he started walking and he found only his footsteps are there and no one is following him. So he was very much afraid anyway. That very moment he was very cautious to cross that particular patch. Then after that he called God and he started shouting, you give the word, you promise that you will be with me, but you are not with me. You, that particular time you left me. Then the God said, no. That, that footsteps that you were seeing, it is not yours, it is my footsteps. 
I lifted you on my uh, uh, lap and then I crossed that portion. So that is the Arthavada. That is giving some assurances and the people get attracted. Oh, is it? Then if we do this, it is good. Some people will be telling that in our country, if you go sometimes, they'll be telling this tree, if you are hang binding one red color cloth or the yellow color cloth, a piece of red or yellow or these and that, all your wishes, prayers will be fulfilled, answered. And the poor tree, the whole from the top to toe, people will be coming and they will be binding the different colors and all over. Why? Somebody told that when I did that, my prayer was fulfilled. So, everybody started, whether it is coming or not. That's called Arthavada. This Arthavada, unless and until Arthavada is there, people are not interested at all. That is called Arthavada. So, we find in the Brahmana, these are the system. First is the ritual, system of ritual. And second is the Yajna. And third is the explanation, iti vritta, why this yajna. And fourth is the arthavada, fifth calm meditation, upasana, meditation. And finally, brahma vidya, upanishad. So these are the different sections of the brahmana. Now part of brahmana is also known as aranyaka. So I was thinking that I should have given you in writing so that it could be easy for you to preserve. Otherwise, very difficult to remember. The first is the Veda and Veda is having two. That is one is Mantra, another is Brahmana. And the, from the Mantra comes the Samhita. And Samhita and Brahmana is comes the Aranyaka. Mantra, Samhita, Brahmana, Aranyaka. Now, the Samhita and Aranyaka, both they create Upanishad. This Upanishad is also known as Vedanta. The, when you are entering, you must have read Vivekananda Vedanta Society, that Vedanta is the last. And Vivekananda, because he is the expounder of that knowledge in the modern age, so the Vivekananda Vedanta. I say this Vedanta, this is called Brahma Vidya. The Vedanta, the main knowledge, the part of Veda, and how it is, then it says, gives an example. Mukti the Upanishad, it gives a wonderful example. The Vedanta, of all these Vedas, the Vedanta. What is that Vedanta? It says, Tila Eshu Taila Bhat. Tila, the Indian ladies, they know the Tila means the seeds, the oil seeds, Tila. And in that oil seeds, what is the main thing? Toila. Toila means the oil. If that seed is not containing that liquid part or the oil, then it is of no use. The husk of that or the skin of that is of no use. So this is the Veda, the main Veda, the, all these four Vedas, what is the main thing? Like the seed of that oil, here also it is the knowledge. Tileshu Tailabad Bede Vedantaha Supratishtitaha. Supratishtitaha is a perfectly is there. What is that? Vedanta. What is that Vedanta? The last knowledge. What is the last knowledge? Atmagyana. What is that Atmagyana? Uh, that we are constantly chanting every day, Bodha Sarupa. Now today we are discussing about the Yajurveda. We know that the Veda Vyasa gave the Yajurveda to his disciple Vaishampayan. And Vaishampayan, he had a very famous disciple, Yajnavalka. The many of the times, those who have read the Upanishad, they read the Yajnavalka, conversation of Yajnavalka and Gargi and all that. This Yajnavalka, he had a rift, a disagreement with his guru. Then he said, he was a proud man also, and he said, I don't want your teaching. I like to give it back to you. I don't want your teaching. The giving back means, then he said, I won't carry this knowledge with me. I left it here itself. I will earn it. I will learn it again somewhere else. 
But the process are there. So he gave that process and promised. And when they are explaining, they say as if he vomited all the knowledge. It is not like that. The knowledge cannot be vomited. The what he did actually, he promised that I am not going to utilize, use your teachings, your process. That I won't do that. He left it. Now, he left that particular portion of knowledge, what will happen is a vast knowledge. And only one person could remember it, understand it. Now, he has left it. What will happen? There is no one else who could do it. So, he distributed that knowledge, small, small part among other disciples. Their capacity was small. So, they understood the one part, second part, third part like that. One person was having the one to hundred, all the slokas. Now, that has been given to ten, 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 to ten people. As because they were having small, small part, they have been described as the titira pakshi. Titira pakshi is a special type of bird, small, small bird. So, that titira, they all the time come and catch something and go away. So, titira, in a big, big group, they always, they fly, they leave. So, the titira pakshi from there, toitiriya upanishad, toitiriya from the titira. Because, and the another name of that same part became black yajur veda. Because once it was learned and now it has been given back, so it is dark, it is black. So, black yajur veda. Yagyavalka was no doubt arrogant, but he was self confident and the sharp intellect. So, he went under the guidance of the Surya and the same knowledge he acquired, it became Shukla Yajur Veda. So, Krishna Yajur Veda and the Shukla Yajur Veda. The subject matter of both the Samhitas is the, almost the same. Though the arrangement of the mantras are same, and uh, sometimes it is different also. Shukla Yajur Veda is more systematic. That afterward, the Yajna Balka, he acquired, he more systematic and orderly. Some texts are also very new. Though the main teaching of the Black Yajur Veda is based on ritual, it also having a wonderful Upanishad called Katho Upanishad. That we will, when we will study the Upanishads, we will come across to this Upanishad. Veda of the Black Yajur Veda school is mainly a work on sacrificial ritual. All the sacrifices they will be doing. We have already started the Rig Veda and then we have started the Samu Veda. But the Yajur Veda is totally different. Why? Because it is only the sacrifice. All the yagyas that you do performing in the Hindu temples is all under this. Yajur Veda. There is some portion, the Yajur Veda, the Black Yajur Veda, Krishna Yajur Veda, according to that they do, some according to the Shukla Yajur Veda. But all the rituals they do, and we will find how they do are doing. So the, it clearly supports the elaborate sacrificial system. It is the only work in the Samhita literature which expounds in details the system of the New and full moon, Soma, Baja Peya, and Rajashua, and at the same time, Ashwamedha Yajna. Rajashua Yajna, Ashwamedha Yajna, all these words most of the Indians they know. Ashwamedha and Rajashua, when there is a very big festivities are going on, the people talk about the Rajashua Yajna. Or there is a there will be sacrifice and then there will be some people will be there, they will be getting all the benefits. So, that is called Ashwamedha Yajna. In the Kanda, Kanda means the chapter 4 of the Krishna Yajur Veda, the very first mantra teaches the grasping of the spade in the ceremony of fire ritual known as Ukha Sam Brahmana. And it says, yoking the mind fast. See, the words are different. I am not reading the Sanskrit. Yoking the mind fast, expanding his thoughts, Savitri, 
that means the sun, dis discerning the light, hath brought Agni the fire from the earth. The, from the earth, the fire is coming. It is the fire that they are going to worship. And for that only, they are putting in this way, first thing is what? Who is going to perform? A human being. And what is he? Is the mind. If the mind is in a different place and he is per performing the yajna, then he won't be able to perform it perfectly. So that is why the first thing is yok. That means you make your mind steady. And then only you should perform the yajna. The first thing is your mind should be steady and then the thoughts should be spending with the expanding with the light. Light means the knowledge. So it's called Shabitri the Surya. The knowledge, as the sun comes, all the darkness go away. Similarly, when the knowledge comes, dawns, all that darkness of ignorance moves away. And it's giving the light. Why? Because the fire is coming. Coming from where? It says it is coming from the earth. And in afterward it says in a nice way, thou art the spade, that the spade that they're using to, because going to the clay, that is the chapter is going to the clay. And we are going to perform the yajna. How you will do it? In the America, when you see, there are all other systems are there, so they will be putting that. But still, if you go to some places, even in the Ganges, we have a yajna shala, that is the place where the yajna is done. How you have done it? We have first made a small portion. We have, we have dug over there, a little hole is there inside the earth and then there will be sand and then there will be the woods and then the fire will come. So inside the earth, so where from the fire is coming? So they explain it's coming from the earth. Not that you cannot think that oh it is the volcano, it's coming from the, not like that. It is actually the holding, who is holding this? And who is going to dig it first, going to make it a spade? How the spade will do that? Thou art the spade, thou art the O man. You are just like the O man, the lady, who are giving the birth of fire. So you should be like this. And from the abode of the earth, I bear Agni. Now as if the spade that is going to dig it, then they are calling it as a, like an O man who is going to give the birth of the fire. And that was the way they used to talk now we find again, thou art the back of the waters and expansive wide about the, about to be at the Agni. Now the, the earth when they are digging, the water is there. So obviously if the water is oozing, if the water is flowing again, then the fire cannot be burned. So you are at the back of the waters, you are holding back the waters, O oh earth. When we read this, we feel, what is it? The most of the European scholars, so they wrote, this is all nonsense. You cannot find any sense in it. But not understanding what actually they are going to do. If you have the patience, if you read, then suddenly you find, because they are going to do the yajna. What is the yajna? Friends, again, let me remind you, we have already started Rig Veda, right? And the Rig Veda said, Aham Brahmashmi Tattamasi. That is the idea. The Rig Veda, he already declared, Aham Brahmashmi, I am the all pervading God, all pervading consciousness. You two are the same. That was the height of philosophy, height of experience, height of realization. Again, the same Veda understood that all people cannot remember that, all people cannot realize that. For them, something concrete is necessary. Otherwise, it is impossible. You cannot explain. So, obviously, they have come down and they are introducing the rituals. 
And for the rituals, what is the first thing is necessary? Mind. The mind should be one-pointed. And along with the mind, to keep the mind one-pointed and attest to these and varieties of things, and that is called rituals, are introduced. And it says that you have to take the spade. There's a mantras, so many mantras. I am not uttering, and pages after pages, I am just going. Because the spade, that, we had, that spade over there you can see, the singing like that, when you are taking the earth, you have to, before that, you have to purify the spade also, the spade. You purified the mind and purified the spade. Why? It is not, I am not going to do something just uh, like that. I am going to offer it to God. For every step it should be with the prayer. So when you cook for our food, we just cook. Or we go and purchase from the shop and eat. But when we offer that to God, maybe that we are purchasing from the, from the same shop, but putting it in proper way, then offer it to God, and then we are seeing that everything is clean, and then only offering to God. Similarly, here also, we know the use of the spade, but here we are going to use the same thing for a different purpose, that is yajna. So, they are telling that the, you are expensive, wide, and bear the agni, list to be laid aside, growing to mind as the lotus flower, do thou extend in with with the measure of the heaven. So the different type of words they are using. Then when they are digging the earth, already there are plants are there, trees are there, at least some plants. See, they are mindful about the plants also. When they are digging the earth, so that there will be yajna, what the plants will do? They will say, why you are uprooting me? Why you are killing me? So they are praying to the plant plants also. This is the speciality of the Hindus. And they say, O plants, do ye accept Agni here? So when they are as if they are talking with the plants also, because they know the plants are also having the life. And when we are going to do something which will destroy that plant, so they are talking to plants and they are telling, praying to the plants, do ye accept Agni here? Because I am going to lit the fire over here. Please, you also accept. Who cometh auspicious towards you, that Agni will be good for you too. Casting aside all hostilities. This uh, hostilities and the plants and the trees, they should not curse the person. Oh, you are burning me. So, so much mindful. How? That is the speciality. Again, go back to that knowledge. Each and everything is nothing but the manifestation of the same consciousness. Is the plant, is the earth, and in the earth there are so many other things are also there, living things are there. So they are mindful of, of that too. So when they are burning the fire, water is there, plants are there, trees are there, so that is the speciality. Sitting down, may he smite away from us the misfortune. Why we are doing it? Because through that prayer, we will be free from the misfortune. Let Aditi fashion the pan with might. And we are going to place the pan over that, so that we can pour the ghee and all other things. So that particular thing, there. Let Aditi, the mother of gods, fashion the pan with might, with her arms, with wisdom, let her bear Agni in her womb, and as mother a child in her lap. So Aditi, the mother of God, she, we are praying to that God, goddess, please come and support this Agni. May the Bayus fashion thee with the Gayatri meter. Now when the fire is burned, there may be the wind and it will be difficult to lit the fire. So they are praying to the Bayu. Then the Rudras and then the Adityas, then the sky to each and every one they are first praying. So when you do the Yajna, so many things. 
It's a very simple worship when you do over here, as if just be a person is coming, sitting and offering the flower. It is not like that. If you come in the morning, 8.30, the Maharaj is doing uh, Bharatananda Ji. There also, Panchaprachar, very simple. Only five upachara, five items they are offering. Even then, he will be making the first that place where he is sitting, that is also holy. He will be hitting the, with the left leg, he will be hitting the, that art, let whatever it is here, go away. I am sitting over here, nothing is there. Is a, but still, the system is there. I am hitting the art, making the vibration. If you are there, any living being, go away from here. And if there is some spirits are there, in the atmosphere, always the dead spirits are there. So you also go away from me, because I am going to burn the, so he is imagining. So these are the system it goes. And it says, in the pan only, see this is called Krishna Yajurveda you are start studying. The pan, the particular thing that over that, they are going to put the ghee and all. O pan, may the wives, the goddesses, connected with all gods, prepare thee on the abode of earth. In the manner of Agnirasa, O pan, may the protectors, the women, the goddesses, connected with all gods, cook thee on the abode of earth. And it says, be kind, O Agni, and awaken him. Arise for the great good fortune. May he that wided thee, O Agni, be not harmed. May thy priest be famous. Tha these Brahmanas, O Agni, choose thee. Now they are praying to the Agni now. Before that preparation has been done, then they are now praying for the Agni. Why? O Agni, now Agni is the fire. Agni is the, that fire is the God. I am worshipping you. So please bless me and don't harm me. So these are the prayers. It goes like that. If you study digging up the clay, that is the chapter goes in the open, that Veda. Krishna Yajur Veda, digging up the clay. Now for us it is a funny thing. Oh, digging up the clay, why unnecessary? But those who are the ritualistic, this is very important for them. They have to remember it. And perfectly they should do the digging of the clay and going to the clay. They will be going to the clay to the, that is also a ceremony. Then digging the clay is also a ceremony. Then taking the clay is also a ceremony. Mixing the clay is also a ceremony. So because you have to put different type of clays together so it becomes strong. It's not the mortar, it's not the cement, and only with the clay you are doing. Then they'll be talking about kindling the fire. Then afterwards, they will put taking the fire in the pan. Pan means something that is holding the fire. And then they will talk about the bricks, different type of bricks. In the first, the beginning, the bricks are different. The second stage, they'll be different. Third stage, will be different. All the bricks are different. Very meticulously, they'll be to remove is your mother by name. Remove her. All the remove her means, they are saying that, remove her. You are cleaning. And you are the mother. Look at it. Constantly, they are thinking in a different way. E are the streams. Remove whatever is unwell. Now the water is flowing. After the performances, what we do? We wash. And when we are washing, what happens? And the, when we are washing again, that also they are praying to that, remove which is not well, which is not good. That you remove, clear. Let one of you aid another. Let one be the assistant to another. All the plants in unison. When the people are working together, and they are telling that one should be very much, uh, the, uh, when you are doing, helping each other. In the puja, in the system, there is so many people are working together. You have seen 
there are two, three girls, they will be helping each other, preparing and serving, giving it, all these things, here we, they do. And when they are working, it is telling them that you must do like this. Then it is the, they talk about the sand, the sand also should be like this. Then it comes to the Rudra, there are so many gods are there, one is the Rudra. It talks about the bricks, it talks about the Rudra, offering to Rudra. Homage to thy, O Rudra, to thine arrow homage also, homage to thy bow and homage to thine arms. And this bow, bow, bow arrow and all these things of the Rudra, Rudra means the God that we know, oblation to the Bachakramana, that is also another God they give the oblation to them. Then another, the, with eyes on every side, with a face on every side, with hands on every side, with feet on every side, the one God producing sky and earth and wealth them together with arms, with wings. What was the basis? Now, we, I'll just read this and conclude. Now, we were talking about all these things and sometimes we are feeling bored. What is this that the Veda that we are going to study, isn't it? But the Veda, when we are studying and carefully studying, we can understand the depth of their knowledge. They are going down to each and everything and seeing the life in it. That is the important thing. They are, even the sand, even the brick, the water, the plant, all the animals, the birds, each and everything, insects, each and everything they are worshipping, considering that that is also the manifestation of God. But why they are creating the fire and calling the fire as God, asking people to give the oblation to the fire, because they can get a tangible God before them. If you ask each and everything is God, here, the last sloka that I will read over here, it says, with eyes on every side. Let's look at it. Now it comes suddenly, it gives that highest knowledge. Eyes on every side, that means each and every one. In the Bhagavad Gita afterwards, the Krishna is also telling in the same way. Sarvata pani padam tat. Sarvata akshi shiro mukam. Sarvata srutiman loke sarvama tishtati. The God, me, the Krishna, who am I? All the heads that you see, the eyes that you see, each and everything is nothing but me. The I manifest in every being. That is the Krishna, though the personal God. Why personal God? Because it is easy for us to concentrate on the personal God. And here also we find with eyes on every side, with a face on every side, with hands on every side, with feet on every side. It reminds us the sloka of the Bhagavad Gita. The God is everywhere. Now he is asking the Rishi of the Veda, he is instigating, he is inspiring the people. What was the basis? Now all these things that has been created, what was the basis? Second, which and what is the support? Now this universe has been created. Who is supporting it? Some, something must be supporting it. Otherwise, how it is? And thirdly, it says, when producing art, then Bachakraman, all seeing, disclosed the eye with his might. This, the sky that was created, a huge, the firmament, as they say, huge. Who created it? How he created it? How the anything that we create, suppose the roof, is supported by something. How the sky is holding, who is supporting it? You must inquire, he is telling. What was the wood? Because in those days everything was made of wood. So they could think of wood, they could not think of this, uh, uh, what's called the still. So naturally they are telling what, what was the wood and what the tree, which type of trees that they used, 
Whence they formed sky and earth? When the earth was made, the sky was made, what was the basis? Who created it? How it was created? So all this you should question. O ye wise ones, inquire with your minds. Whom to inquire? Whom to ask? Then he's telling your mind. You have to go down deep into your mind and you have to find out the answer within your mind. So here is the speciality of the Veda. It says so many things. Nowadays, in, for the modern people, it is all useless. But suddenly it goes to the high up and said like this, on what he stood as he supported the world. Now there was nothing. Now he is creating. When he is creating, suppose when the people, they were creating this building, they were standing on something. When the God was creating on which he was standing to get the support, the moment you can answer this, you can answer that, you can get that. You need not to go to somebody else to get the answer. You have to concentrate your mind and go down to your mind, come up with the answer. And what will be the answer? Self-creation. The God is creating out of what? Out of his own self. So afterwards in the Upanishad we will find it says Tad Srishtva. Tad means this universe. Srishtva Tadeva Anupravishat. He Tad Eva. Tad means the same God. Eva as if Anupravishat entered into it. So he created that he entered into it. And what is that he? Is the consciousness. And he created out of what? Consciousness. And then what happened? He entered, the consciousness entered into all these. Then what happened? Suppose the God has created and entered into all these, that means God exhausted? No. Again it says, Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachate. Purnasya, Purna, Adaya, Purna Meva Vashishyate. So if we can understand that, we understand the whole of Hinduism. But right now you won't be able to understand, so we stop over here. <laughs> and if you all understand, then what will happen to my classes? So, let us chant the mantras again, the same mantra. Uh, the two mantras are there, one from Atharva Veda, and after these we will study the Atharva Veda. And that will be very interesting, Atharva Veda. I will be talking about so many things. If you like to put someone under your spell, the mantra is there <laughs> in the Atharva Veda. Ya etam devam, ekabritam veda, sa sarvasmai, vipashyati, yacha pranani, yacha na, tamidam nigatam saha, Sa Isha Eka Eka Breed Eka Eva Sarvi Asmin Deva Eka Brito Bhavanti That what breeds and what breeds not. All are nothing but the manifestation of the same consciousness. That means the living and the are non-living, the sentient and non-sentient, all of the cons and that one, if you can realize, you realize everything. It comes again. Naham Manusho Nachadeva Yakshaha. Na Brahmana, Shatriya, 
वैश्य शूद्र न ब्रह्मचारी न गृही वनस्थवा भिक्षु न अहम निज बोध स्वरूप निज बोध स्वरूप ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ